point of time and uh, sure did as well today as, as well so uh hto versus unique compartmental so i'm rather than debating what i'm going to do is i'm going to show that it's really not debatable in the sense there are two different procedures but two different patient groups that uh, need them actually so do we really need to debate this uh, like i said two like nakul emphasized you know two separate procedures one is the realignment the hto is a realignment procedure whereas the ukr is a resurfacing procedure but strangely they tend to serve a very narrow group of patient demographic in which the symptoms and the you know uh, age sex everything overlaps so like just now we had looked at the indications for hto uh, and that's the indication for ukr like uh, in in hto it is mild arthritis younger patients good range ligament laxity definitely hto scores on that you can correct a ligament laxity with doing uh, you know changing your slope uh, high activity patients definitely hto scores better obviously you can consider it but ukr can be considered in severe arthritis you are looking at uh, you know complete bone on bone kind of uh, damage as well and even in the elderly age group hto is a better option intact acl is a must low demand patients again you know uh, uh, that's a, a kind of drawback for the ukr so it is this group in between if i can yes. and think the mark so it is this group in between the middle column in which uh, you know it becomes a debate that is the age group between 55 and 65 were moderately active uh, with you know mild malalignment 5 to 10 degrees and mild kind of instability uh, that's where we actually start to you know look for what is better the hto or the uk again the same points now you know we are debating we will go and look at literature but we could actually cherry pick literature Uh, to support what we want to prove so uh, let's look at each one of them like survival i mean there was this paper by uh, you know sao et al and uh, this showed ukr to have better survival again but you know it has uh, demographic based and it definitely had less complications but uh, nakul could argue the australian joint registry showed that uh, the hto had better survival so and this being a meta analysis so you know it took in all the kinds of different types of sto's the closing wedge opening wedge a uh, fixed uh, mobile bearing uni so it looked into all that and it uh, showed that the ukr the current designs are definitely lasting longer uh, on rehab front again uh, this paper by santoso et al uh, ukr of course i mean you can mobilize them on day one they can get back to walking it is much quicker than a total knee and uh, there was lesser requirement of supervised physio as in a total knee but uh, these patients got back to their activity of daily living much quicker than a patient who underwent hto function wise again this particular paper in the american journal of uh, sports medicine uh, oh, sorry rehab medicine had shown that ukr uh, patients had better function again highly demography dependent but i would agree to concede to nakul's point that hto had better range of movement complications higher complication rate in hto uh, in this uh, particular paper published by uh, in the indian journal of orthopedics uh, there is a higher uh, you know rate of complications that was noted uh, revisions now in revisions nakul did mention that uh, the revision of a ukr is more difficult because of the bone loss but uh, one needs to understand the difficulties uh, while doing a revision of an hto to a tkr even though it might have better results the difficulties in exposure previously existing hardware balancing a post hto knee is always a challenge because it somewhere lies between a varus inflection and valgus in extension getting a stem in if you need a stem in hto it is going to be a very difficult scenario because of the change in alignment of the tibial uh canal so uh, those those are the challenges you would face while doing an sto but if you get it of course uh, the hto it is proven that hto conversion to tkr is better nakul had uh, shown this paper uh, about the lost art you know the last decade or so the usage of sto going less but at the same time it also mentioned that the usage of uni compartmental has gone up so i mean there's no actual reason behind this but definitely there might be people thinking as to looking at the function and you know how uh, the uni compartmental is giving better results in, and you know quicker rehabilitation Uh, for to understand this, we also need to understand the difference between a young arthritic knee and an elderly arthritic knee. 
So for a young arthritic knee who comes to us uh, with the knee pain and who's exhausted all his modalities of conservative treatment, you go for the complete battery of investigations of X-ray, scanogram, MRI. And if you see, first you look for his bone on bone damage on the uh, standing X-ray. If you do not see that, then you look at the MRI, look for chondral lesions, meniscus uh, lesions. If it is absent, you conserve this patient. Continue with your conservative treatment. If you see a chondral lesion or a meniscus lesion, look at the scanogram. If there is a deformity, then you give them an arthroscopic plus an HTO. And if there's no deformity, just an arthroscopic. Now, if there is bone on bone, then look at their lab markers or history. And if you have an inflammatory pathology, then this patient, young patient, whatever age, he needs a total knee. If the patient, if the inflammatory markers are negative, RA factors is negative, then you look uh, at the ACL status. And if the ACL status is not intact, again, this patient gets a TKR. But if the ACL, ACL status is intact in a young patient with negative uh, inflammatory markers, and then you look at their activity levels. If the activity levels are high, offer them an HTO low, you go for a unicompartmental. So that is the protocol we follow generally. Uh, so, in a, so in a nutshell, young arthritic patient, high demand patients, it's always going to be an HTO. Low demand patients, it is always better to consider a unicompartmental knee. And uh, just to debate that small uh, uh, patient demographic in which these indications tend to overlap, it's very small. But unfortunately, I mean, I've been through literature, there's not one study that has proven. I mean, you have this, uh, you know, radically different papers which say one is better, other is uh, you know, not good enough from, you know, arguing from both the sides. But uh, when you look at the meta-analysis, nobody has come out with a clear uh, consensus as which, so you could pick and choose what you want to do in these patients and where the indications overlap. So uh, the two greats, or in today's world, we call them goats. I mean, Federer in tennis and Messi in uh, football. But can we compare the two? No, I mean, they are excellent in their own field, so we cannot compare the two of them. Similarly, I think these two procedures, they have their own indications, and in the correct patient, that particular procedure would work well for them. Thank you.